This video demonstrates new cybersecurity enhancements added to SCADAPAC controllers and SCADAPAC configurator software. If you're watching this video, it is perhaps because you have read the label notification on your new SCADAPAC, or you have attempted to connect to a new SCADAPAC with SCADAPAC configurator version 1.2.1 or older and have received this message saying the controller is locked. And if you tried to override the controller lock using the existing locking commands in SCADAPAC configurator, you would also be blocked and presented with this message. This video will demonstrate how to resolve this issue and more importantly, how to manage security locking on your new SCADAPAC controller. But first, let me explain what this message means and the purpose of the new package label. Schneider Electric believes cybersecurity is critical in today's connected world. As such, we have added new mechanisms to our products to improve their cybersecurity capabilities. This includes SCADAPAC because cybersecurity is relevant to all IP-based or IP-routable devices. As of January 1st, 2020, SCADAPAC controllers now ship with a cybersecurity feature that requires initial configuration before the hardware can be used. As a result of the addition of the cybersecurity feature, customers receiving new SCADAPAC controllers will also need to obtain updated tools in order to apply controller configuration. A label highlighting this requirement has been attached to the SCADAPAC packaging. Included on the label is the following list of software tools that have been updated to support the cybersecurity enhancements, which includes SCADAPAC Configurator. To unlock your SCADAPAC and resolve this issue, you will need to update your SCADAPAC Configurator version to 1.3.1 or newer. As you may have discovered, older versions of SCADAPAC Configurator will not be able to configure new SCADAPACs equipped with the cybersecurity feature. Contact your local support team or this email to obtain the SCADAPAC Configurator update. Once updated to SCADAPAC Configurator 1.3.1 or newer, you will have three choices for managing the secure lock on your new SCADAPAC. Disable the security lock feature. If the security lock feature is desired in the future, a cold boot or service boot will re-enable it. Or apply the security lock with a password of your choice. Or downgrade the controller's firmware to remove security locking altogether. Typically, you may want to begin with option one to disable the security lock because you will need to have the controller unlocked in order to edit and write configuration changes to it. You may choose option two to apply the security lock later after all configuration is completed and the device is placed in the field. The security lock blocks all configuration commands, but protocol access is not blocked to communications with other devices or with the SCADA host. We will discuss the option three later. We begin with option one, how to disable the security lock. Note that the device must be unlocked or lock feature disabled in order to edit and write configuration changes to it. This option will disable the requirement for a security lock password. A cold boot or service boot is needed to re-enable the security locking. If you have other SCADA packs on your network that use firmware without cybersecurity feature, this option will set the new SCADA pack to operate like the existing SCADA packs. I'll select SCADA pack configurator to demonstrate now. This is the updated version, version 1.3.1 and I'm connected over USB to a new SCADA pack 334. If I select a command, I see that it's locked. So we want to go to controller security and to disable the lock, we select device does not require a password and select apply. The information message displayed confirms the desired result. And it also states the requirement for a cold boot or service boot to reinitialize security locking if needed in the future. 
Now with locking disabled, I'd like to point out a few items when working with a device with locking disabled. In the future, if you need to cold boot your controller, note that the security lock will be reactivated and you will need to disable locking again as just shown. If you have users in your organization that intend to remain using the SCADAPAC configurator 1.2.1 or older, then disabling the security lock also allows these users to configure the RTU without issue. However, if one of these users needs to cold boot the controller, the security lock will be reactivated and only SCADAPAC configurator 1.3.1 or newer can disable locking at this point. All the more reason to have all your users update their PCs with the latest version of SCADAPAC configurator. Let's take a moment to look at how you would re-enable security lock. Well, if you selected the controller security dialog, it would remind you that currently you do not require a password. Now recall we said that a cold boot or a service boot would reinitialize security locking. So if you do cold boot your controller and then go to the security lock dialog, it will have reactivated locking automatically and the dialog will now look like this, which is what we saw earlier, and we can select a password or disable it again. However, a cold boot does erase your controller data, so that's a bit severe if you just want to re-enable control locking. So for the service boot, we again before a service boot will see that the controller doesn't require a password. When you do a service boot, that same menu will now show the option with the bullet initialize device lock. Selecting and applying this is the option that we have now. And what it does is reactivates the controller lock. Again, the same dialog now appears and you can apply uh, the lock or disable it again. The advantage here is that the controller data has been retained. Remember though that this is a service boot, so when you're finished, you're going to want to power cycle to execute a run boot so that the logic restarts. Looking at option two now, applying the security lock. Let's switch to SCADA Pack Configurator. So once again, I have attached a new SCADA Pack, and if I select any command, I see that the controller is locked. So the way to approach this is we go to the controller security dialog, and this time, instead of disabling the password, we'll enter a password. It must be eight characters in length or more. And now it says that we have uh, been successful in applying this password. So if I select another command, we see that the controller is still locked, but the difference this time is we know the password. So enable, enable to uh, further configure or interact with the SCADA pack, we first have to unlock it. So we go to the controller security dialog again, and this time enter the password that we now know. The controller is now unlocked and see the advisory here that the device should be locked after the configuration changes have been applied. So now I'm able to select any command or I can write to the controller. And once I'm finished, I will reapply the lock to secure it. There we are. I apply the lock. And now note that no further communication is allowed in configuration. Summarizing how to work with a password locked SCADA pack. Whenever you're using SCADA pack configurator to communicate with your controller, when it's locked, well, the first thing you need to do is unlock it by entering the password on the controller security dialog. Then you can execute all the commands you need to like read and write of the configuration or file management. Then you relock the controller using the controller security dialog to secure it. Note that locking blocks all configuration commands, but not protocol access to the SCADA host or peer devices. Looking at our last option three, to remove the cybersecurity feature, from being enabled on the SCADA pack in the future. 
replaced the controller firmware with the last version before security locking was introduced for your controller type. However, this option may be helpful in the short term, but downgrading firmware means you are choosing not to take advantage of any improvements, fixes, or new features associated with maintaining up-to-date firmware. Thank you.